We're particularly interested in what are algebra tiles. Maybe you've heard of them, maybe you haven't, but this will give us a little introduction to algebra tiles, which we will see in the upcoming weeks. Um, so here are what they actually look like. Here are the tiles. We have an x squared tile, an x tile, and a unit tile. Now you may be wondering, hmm, those look eerily similar to base 10 pieces, and they do. So we can still use the same slightly ideas and techniques, except now instead of whole numbers we're using, uh, or decimals, we're using variables. Um, so our x squared looks similar to our flat, or our hundreds. Uh, our x looks similar to our long, and our unit also looks very similar to our unit in base 10 pieces. We know that with base 10 pieces, if I have uh, 10 units together that make a long, or if I put 10 longs together, I make a flat. However, that's not the same with algebra tiles. So an algebra tile, I know that an x times an x would give me an x squared. So that's very similar to a long by a long. However, there are no amount of units that when I add them together, notice they're not the same length as the value of x. So that's the difference. Whereas our unit, if we put 10 of them together, gave us a long, I cannot put units together to make an x. It just simply is, is impossible, okay? So the area of our x squared tile, as we just saw, is an x times an x, which is x squared. The area of a rectangle is the length of x by the length of 1, or just simply x. And the area of the small square is a 1 by 1, which is 1. Now, not only do we have the positive versions, but we also have the negative versions of our x squared, our x, and our unit tile. So what can we do with these algebra tiles? That's the question. We can do all kinds of things. We can add and subtract integers, leading us to the zero principle. So if I have two, uh, if I have a negative x squared and a positive x squared, those two cancel out to zero. A negative x and a positive x cancel out to zero. A negative one and a positive one cancel out to zero. Notice here I can add and subtract, so I have four units, and I'm adding in an additional negative one unit, but notice here that I make a zero. So these ideally cancel themselves out. I can usually just, uh, knowing that they make a zero pair, I can circle them and get rid of them. So I'm left with three positive units. I also can model linear expressions. So here we see we have two x squared plus an x, minus three units. I can model the distributive property. Here I have three copies of x plus two. So here's one copy, two copy, three copies. Leading me that all in all, I have three x's and six units. I can simplify polynomials. I have negative three x, plus 1, plus x, plus 3. Rearranging to combine those together, I see that I have a group of 0, which I can get rid of, leading me to just negative 2x plus 4. I can also solve the linear equation. So on the left, I have x plus 2 equal to 3. If I want to get my x value by itself, we know that what we do to one side, we have to balance by doing to the other. So if I wanted to get x by itself, I know that I need to subtract 2 from the left, which means that I have to subtract 2 from the right. Notice then, by adding in negative 2 to both sides, I've created two pairs of zeros that I can take away leaving me with x equal to 1. I can evaluate using substitution. 
Currently, I have the expression 3 plus 2x. What happens if I were to replace my x values with four units? Covering them up, I'll end up then with nine whole units. We can also multiply polynomials. We're going to use what we call a mat. Here, one of the mats is multiplication mat. So along the outside, I have x minus one and x plus four. This is very similar to when we multiplied using the area model with base 10 pieces, except now we're using algebra pieces instead of base 10 pieces. So I'm representing x minus one on the left, x plus four on the bottom, or you could do vice versa, x minus one, x plus four at the top here. Um, our next goal is to fill in the blanks here into a rectangle. Again, an area model, we need to have a rectangle. So to do that, I know that an x times an x would give me an x squared. Here, I would need the length of x, 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 x. Up here, I would need, well, 1 times negative x would be, or excuse me, 1 times negative 1 times x would be negative. Negative 1 times negative 1 would be negative, negative, negative all across the top. So I see I end up with an x squared, 1 negative x, 4 positive x's, and negative four units. Combining like terms, because I do see I have a zero pair here, I end up with x squared plus three x minus four. That leads us to that if we can multiply polynomials, we certainly can factor polynomials. So let's say I start off with x squared plus six x plus eight. What might the two factors be that give me this solution? Well, this length here would be x plus four. We have x plus four down along the bottom and x plus two along the left-hand side. So x plus four times x plus two would give us the x squared plus six x plus eight. So these dimensions here would give us that particular rectangle. We can also divide polynomials. Let's say I have x squared plus 7x's plus 6, and I want to divide by x plus 1. What would our other factor have to be down here? I can see that this dimension would be x, and each one of these x values would have a dimension of 1. So x plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. x plus 6 would be the, di uh, the result of x squared plus 7x plus 6 divided by x plus 1. Now this is just an intro to algebra tiles. Um, as we go through grades 6 through 8, we'll see them more in depth and work with them more. Um, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to play with them a little bit um, before we actually dive into them. So you have a little time to digest what algebra tiles are, especially if they're new for you.